Now we'll have a look at the different stats on a model. So if you look in the force list book, uh, the rules are actually split over two books. You've got the rule book, which is all the rules for moving, shooting, fighting, that sort of thing. And then all the stats for the different factions, 10 different factions, are in the force list book. Um, and in here, you'll find everything you need to get playing for all the different factions. So when it comes to the stats, um, I'll read through them here. You start with SP, so that's how far you can move. And it's written, for example, as two, three. So the two is how many cubes you can move normal advance, and the three is how many you could run do as a sprint. So you've so, got different options. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? We're sitting here and we've got some dice, but we've got no tape measure or any other measuring device, all based on cubes. Isn't it? Yeah, so one of the, probably the really the best thing I'd say about Dead Zone is there's no measuring in terms of tape measures or widgets or any sort of things like that. Uh, it is literally you're told what your movement stat is, so two, three, and that means you can then just move the cubes. You can place yourself anywhere within that cube. Uh, you can place yourself behind cover, behind a building, anything like that. And we'll come to this in the movement bit, but it also means you can kind of move upwards as well. So the cubes are at multiple, multi-levels? Yes, so yeah, pretty much. Cube we're playing. So you imagine, yeah, this is like a 3D space that we're moving around in. Um, so, yeah, so when it says two, three, that just means basically that you can move two or three cubes. You've got your ranged, uh, so that is when we start to get into the normal stats. So you've got, it might be six plus, and that means uh, you'll be rolling a six on the dice. Dead Zone uses D8s, so uh, there might be some stats that are like seven plus. Um, it uses D8s, and also the D8s explode. So we have exploding eights. So that means if you roll a natural eight, you then get to roll another dice. And then all of a sudden, you're on the Dead Zone eight train. Uh, you've got a fight stat, so fight will be what you're using in assaults, and that, again, uh, we'll come to that in a minute, and there's different bonuses you can have there. Survive, so when you're the target of a ranged attack or an, an assault, you have, you've got the option to survive, um, if you're, or you can fight back as well if you're getting melee. Uh, armor, so that, as the name implies, is your armor stat, so that will protect you uh, from when you're getting attacked. Now that is written as a number, and that reduces the amount of successes potentially that your opponent has uh, when they roll. So if they roll three, that will reduce it to two if you've got an armor of one. HP, that's your health. Um, so if you've got a HP of two, you can take two wounds for your removed dead. Size, the size is interesting. That's something that's changed slightly if you've played Dead Zone Second Edition. Um, size used to be linked to the health, but now we've split them out. So um, a little sort of space route like this is size one, but then as you kind of go up to some of the big ones like the nightmares, that is size two. And what that will do is that will give you certain bonuses when you're going into combat. And then finally, you've got the base size. So bases are really important for Dead Zone 3rd Edition because that will dictate basically what the line of sight is for when you want to shoot, which we'll come to uh, when we do some shooting. Uh, because if things are overhanging over your base, then that means you can't shoot them. Now underneath uh, your kind of common stats, you then have got different weapon options. So some uh, models, particularly the hard plastics when you get those, like the, uh, the Veermin, you have the option of what weapons you want to equip them with. So if we look at a, a Veermin Stalker, for example, you've got the unit, which is the Stalker. You've got the type, which is the Troop. So there are different types of units and that affects uh, how you build your list. The troops are your most basic ones. You've got specialists, which as the name would imply are kind of a bit more specialist and, and uh, will have often better stats or access to better weapons. Uh, you've got support, which are the big things. They're like the striders, different vehicles, big guns as well. Uh, leaders, the leaders are kind of who you charge to command your faction and they will have different kind of leader abilities as well, which we'll talk about when we command dice. Uh, and then you've got living legends as well. So living legends are kind of the really famous, they might be kind of ones that fought in a dead zone before and their name lives on. They're sort of notorious, infamous or famous, depending upon which way you want to look at it. Um, and then basically those will unlock in different ways when you're building your strike team. So troops, you can have as many as you want. And then specialists have to be unlocked by having troops and support have to be unlocked by having troops as well. 
So when you're building your strike team, you want a balanced force to make sure you've got access. So then we come on to the Stalker's weapon. So they're armed with a ray pistol. Uh, now, like I said, some of them will have different options that you can use, uh, like the Enforcers will have burst lasers and, and kind of laser guns and all sorts. So you'll have different options depending upon what you want to do. You've got the range, which is R2. So exactly like the movement, uh, that is also just telling you how many cubes you can fire. And we'll come to that when we look at the shooting. You've got AP, which stands for armor piercing. So that will be, uh, if someone has got armor, that is if you can punch through the armor and get through and, and shoot them to that nice, say nice flesh, but that sounds a bit odd. Keywords, so that will be different uh, keywords that your gun has. Uh, you may also find that some of the units have keywords as well. So like agile or beast, those things. Um, and that will detect how they perform. And that will, uh, yeah, that will change depending on how they perform the game. Uh, you've got VPs. The VPs are how many victory points that unit is worth if you're killed. So some of the units, some of the uh, scenarios you'll be looking to gain objectives on the board. And then you can also supplement that by shooting the enemy. So something like a stalker is quite easy to kill. That's only worth one VP. But then something like a nightmare, which is a bit bigger, a bit harder to kill, will be two. And then finally, you have the points cost. A stalker is worth nine points. And that will change again, depending upon whether you give them a really good weapon. You might also find that the VP change as well. So they're the basic stats. You'll find all these in the force list book, and that's what you'll be using to play and referring to when you're shooting, fighting, or just moving around.